What do you think is going? Gonna win? Yeah. I think barrel pick for the most part is bull crapperoni. Who did the barrel pick? Somebody in New York. Yeah. Colonial. You know, I just think it's a yes. gimmick. I think it's a little gimmick. Hey, look at. I really think blending is probably the better way to go. Yeah, I think the just the regular one yeah. is gonna go, but we'll see. We'll see. Welcome back, everybody. I'm John, and I'm Zach. So this week we are gonna be doing a comparison between uh, two different Sazeracs, but they're both the same. So one of them's a store pick. One of them is just a general bottle you can find wherever. Um, There's so, a lot of hype about store picks. <clears throat> store picks, barrel picks, uh, super popular right now. Everybody's doing them. Yeah. We kind of want to see if this particular store pick is better than what you can find on, on the shelves that, that they're putting out with Sazerac. Yeah, like I really want to get to the, the point of, you know, is a store pick really worth being a store pick or are what they're doing already the best they can do? Yeah. So, um, you, you were able to grab this one when you were up in Buffalo, right? Yeah. So, just like you taters, anytime I'm out, see something kind of cool, got to pick it up. Yeah. Uh, so, it's kind of funny though because in, you know, where we live, I mean, you can't, you can't get this. Yeah. These are, I think the last time I grabbed a Sazerac here in Virginia, uh, they dropped them that morning. Yeah. Um, by like, I don't know, one or two o'clock in the afternoon, they were all gone. She so, gone. Yeah. People snag these up pretty quick for the most part because it's a Buffalo Trace product, but yeah. that's a whole nother thing. Um, a little bit about these bottles. So <clears throat> the Sazerac rye is a Buffalo Trace product. I think it's uh, one of the few ryes that they have. Yeah. So this along with the um, Thomas H. Handy bottle is a rye and then the Sazerac 1818, both right. part of that, that BTAC lineup. This is the, the baby Saz. So I think the the age statement on this is somewhere between four to six years. Um, there's no actual age statement on it, so right now it's just sort of speculated that it's you know somewhere between four and six. Yeah, and, and what's kind of funny is these were a dime a dozen up in New York. Really? I mean, every liquor store I walked in had a store pick, so I don't know how that kind of went down, but it was just kind of interesting to see. Yeah. Well, we'll, uh, we'll get these open. Um, a little bit more history about these bottles. The, uh, good lord, I'm never going to be able to do this. Oh, see, this one had a pull tab. That doesn't have a pull tab. They made this one childproof, so I can't do it. I got, I got the pull tab. Maybe there's something to be there. <clears throat> the, uh, the Sazerac name actually comes from uh, New Orleans, which is kind of weird. But back in the, gosh, late 1800s, I want to say, um, New Orleans had a bunch of bars and coffee shops there was a coffee shop down there called the sazerac coffee house um and they used sazerac rye whiskey to make the sazerac cocktail that we know today so that's a little bit about where where that came from if anybody wants to fact check me go ahead it's on the uh, buffalo trace website which is where i got all that info from anybody wants to pay us to go down there and do an episode we're down for that too all right let's see here it's tight that's not bad. Nice little cork pop on that I'll one. Take that off so I don't mess this up. You want to pour the? Yeah, first? I say we uh, first. Oh, class. Up, up, up. What are we doing? Holy cow! Oh boy! All right, let's go. Everybody knows the rules. <laughs> Gotta get the neck pour in here. We didn't make the rules. We just follow them. Oh, dude! You gotta use your inner grizzly. Ah! All right, we got it. All right, let's get the neck pour out of the way. If anybody missed the. Uh, the tapping that we did of the barrel. Um, there's a lot of rye products in there, so it definitely feels like a uh, like a rye whiskey in here right now. But it tastes good. So far, Infinity Barrel has, has panned out pretty well. It's, it's been incredible. Yeah, it's pretty solid. All right, so we'll get store picks on the left. Okay. Regular is on, on the, the right. right. Okay. Let's see here. I love the bottle. Yeah. It's a cool bottle. Let me switch one here. Now I am a little bummed. My uh, my store pick sticker is starting to pill a little bit. I don't know if it's because we're out here doing it or what, but it's probably this humidity here in Virginia. Um, retail, these bottles are like thirty bucks. Yeah, I, I think, think I was paying like 
$27.99 in Virginia for it last time I got one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I do think I paid a little bit more for the store pick, unfortunately. Uh, I think it was like $35.38, which... You know, that's okay. Well, hey, whatever. What we're here to do is is see if it's a worth the effort trying to trying to track down store picks, and b if it's worth the uh, the added cost because apparently this one was a little bit more here. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna say right off the bit the, the gate, I don't get it. I think the store pick's gonna taste just like the other one, but yeah, I I'm gonna be surprised um, if if there's any like noticeable difference between the two, but. We'll, uh, we'll see. What do you get on the regular one first? It's pretty mild. This one's a little musty. The store pick's pretty musty. Oh, dramatic smell difference. Hmm. Really? <sighs> this one smells spicier than this one. So the, the regular... Sazerac is a little bit spicier on the nose. Coming on a little spicy to me. I I just I'm not. This one seems a little mellowed down. Um, a little bit of rye spice, not as much as you'd expect for a rye whiskey. I think the mash bill on this was 51% rye, 10% malted barley, and whatever the remainder is was corn. I'm, not, not doing math. I, I think you nailed it. First impression. That one's coming in a little musty to me. Yeah, it's kind of got like like a dusty, like musty sort of. I don't know how. Else to... It almost like makes sense though. If it's like a store <laughs> pick and it's really a single barrel store pick, like you know, I guess you could pick up a little more of the barrel maybe than a, a blend, but not too sure about that. I'm gonna start the other way just because I'm, I'm a little curious how okay. it should taste versus how a store pick. What are you getting? That's a damn good rye. That's really unique. Mm. Olives. I'm tasting almost olivey. Interesting. You getting any olives out of that? No. <clears throat> like black olive almost. And I'm surprised I say that. I don't think I've had a whiskey drink like that. So this store pick to me is falling short of the regular off. And it's because this seems more balanced. This is coming across a little just sort of aggressive on the on the up front. Um, it's not that it's alcohol heavy. The rye spices on it are <clears throat> a little bit heavy up front. Um, the regular the regular store offering is just it seems to be like like a like it's a like, better presentation. Think about it. I'm a master distiller and I, I blended this. This is what I think is the best I can do. And then I'm a nobody that owns a store. And I'm going to throw my hat into the ring and, and try to pick a better one. I mean, it's a gimmick. And, like, kudos for it to do it. And, like, there are some store picks out there that are clearly better than, the you know, the other stuff. But, like, in this case, I couldn't agree more. This is a really balanced really thought out if I was having a mixed drink and I was like having a cocktail which this is intended for I want that one yeah that's <clears throat> this was the whiskey I guess back in whenever the the Sazerac coffee house was was around they were making co uh, cocktails and stuff this is where the Sazerac came from this is the whiskey that supposedly this is the whiskey they were using to make those drinks um, yeah big difference this was so with this nice. being a, a store pick single barrel yeah it's just, it seems to be missing a lot. It, it, the regular. It's not as good. Yeah. And that's kind of a bummer because, like, you kind of get a store pick because, like, you kind of want to be extra. You want to be a little different. Like, well, yeah. I mean, the other thing, store picks, they're, the reason that, you know, I'm, I'm drawn to them is because <clears throat> it's cool to see what different stores and other people who are able to go and make these picks and, and yeah. do those things kind of how those picks turn out. Sometimes they're sometimes they're hitters and sometimes they're they're not. So this doesn't seem to be a, a very good store pick. Um, would agree. So I think what we're we're going with is this right here. Just to give this a quick rating. I mean on our on our rating scale, are you gonna put forth a bunch of effort to go try to find these? You know, no, I'm not. 
because I think like when you compare this to like some of the other rides we've kind of you know tasted and especially readily available I think this falls in line but I don't think this is worth like let me jump in my car and go a thousand miles an hour to the liquor store before yeah. someone buys it would I pass on it no nah, if it's sitting there I'm probably gonna grab it so um, if, if you see it you'd buy it only because Buffalo Trace has done such a great job manipulating me into thinking I need to buy every one of their products. So yes, Fair if point. it's there, I'd buy it. Um, Fair point. But when I was up in New York, I mean, these were a dime a dozen and I passed on a few just because they were so readily available. So yeah. it kind of gives you a good feel for where I'd be on that bottle. But what about you? Um, I, you know, <clears throat> I'm more of on the side of try it. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a good rye. It's not bad by any means. Um, mm. I think there are better rides out there, personally. Yeah. I, I would 100% agree <clears throat> with that um, statement. So, you know, if you've never had a Sazerac rye like the Baby Saz here, and you're at you're at a bar or something, you, you want to give it a shot, go for it. Because it's probably not too expensive of a pour. Um, but I, I wouldn't say it's, it's worth going out of your way to try to track down. Well, and I'll say this too. Like, hey, if you're sitting out there and you have... The real BTAC lineup, the 18-year age one. Yeah. Man, we would love for you to... The, Give us a sample and let us know. Yeah, we could, you know, work out a sample swap or something like that. Oh, yeah, all day. We've got a few heavy hitters back here. 18 years age, this may become something pretty incredible. Now you know what time it is. All right. It's my time to defend my wall. So what we are going to do here, we're going to move these glasses out of the way. Oh. All right. So we are going to put John up against one of his, uh, his picks on this bottom shelf. So we've got... E.H. Taylor Small Batch, Buffalo Trace, their standard bourbon, the 1792 12 year, the Remus uh, repeal, and then his Crown 18. Crown 18 is something special. So <clears throat> he's going to go ahead and put on all of this sensory deprivation gear. Oh, I thought this was safety gear. You know, one and the same. Um, we're going to pour him a couple. He's going to have to pick the winner. So go ahead and get that stuff on. I'll get you, I'll get you poured up. I'm calling it now. My wall stays undefeated. All right, put it on. Now, now that I enter the metaverse, <laughs> everything is dark. I can only rely on the skills I've been building for the last five years of my whiskey knowledge. And it will not fail me because I am a pro expert. I'll be real pissed if this takes down 1792-12 here. All right, hold on. <clears throat> Almost feel like I need a palate cleanser here because uh, there's a lot riding on the line here. <laughs> Okay. On the nose, this is really balanced, really sweet. This is thought out really well. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna be honest with you. This one is a little spicier on the nose. Oh, I already know, this is Sazerac. <clears throat> it just has this olivey taste that I can't forget. But like you put this in a cocktail, like I'm in it. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't quite know what this is. If I had a pick, this is either Buffalo or the Colonel, pretty close, but I mean, this is hands down the better pick. Um, so I'm gonna remove my safety gear. Your Buffalo trays is safe? Yeah. Like I said, guys, I'm a professional. I've been training for this like an athlete my entire life. Not gonna pull a fast one on me. Uh, 
So again, uh, my wall still undefeated. Yeah. So I know I'm gonna do a little nightcap with you here. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me get a let me get a fresh glass. I've had another week to sit here and age, so I'm a little curious to see how this is gonna. Oh boy. Color. I swear this gets better every week. I don't know if it's just the hype that it's sitting out here doing its thing, but bubblegum forward. Um, <clears throat> we've got a lot of rye stuff in there, but for whatever reason, uh, today what I'm getting off of this is a lot of caramel on the nose. Um, and then just on the palate, like right up front, it's like this caramel, apple, yeah. like cinnamon. It's, it's crazy. Um, it's almost like we've added flavor to it without adding any flavor to it. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you guys need help at the distillery with some stuff, we know a thing or two, we might be able to help you. Because uh, I'm not mad at this. Yeah. In fact, I'll tell you this. I'd be more than happy to send a two-ounce sample of that for uh, the 18 years as a rack. Maybe. I don't know if I would make that trade if I was somebody else. But... Are you, you know, kidding? This is, if, I'm gonna tell you this, this is like in my top five I've ever had. Oh my god, your wine almost just ate it. We don't have wine in the bourbon bar, Zach. That's all. If you had a, like, in your top five whiskeys you ever had, is this not hitting it for you? I don't know, but I, I don't know how to put that up against those, those that are up there. You think this would take down one of your top five? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm pretty damn proud of it. You the know, thing is, you never talk keep, bad about your child. It's gonna keep changing, and that's yeah. that's why I don't know if I could put it up on the shelf. It's a good point because every week it gets a little different. You know, like right now, it's this is great. Yeah. Who knows? Next week it might taste like butt. I mean, before you leave, we do have a special little treat, guys. Help us help you by opening the grain of the God bottle. Yeah. We're super excited about it. We're gonna crack it when we hit. Is it a thousand? Um, I think we're shooting for 2,000 subscribers before we open that. So sometime five years from now, we'll be opening this with you. And if you yeah. made it that far, we might have a special treat for you at that point. <laughs> Maybe we'll send you a pour, yeah. yeah. But um, make sure you go ahead and like and subscribe. Leave us a comment. Let us know if there's anything you want us to try to take a look at and review. If there's something that you think we should be doing different. We, we appreciate the feedback. So um, definitely let us know. Um, and we appreciate everybody sticking around to the end. Yeah. And if there's a local bottle in your market, you know, and you want us to try it, hit us up. We'll find it out. Yeah. Until next week, have a good one. Tater Nation out.